Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Anton off to as usual and today it's time for yet another tank review. I know I'm kind of spamming these again at the moment but you know I just have to get these tanks sold to kind of make money. So I want to get the reviews out of the way so that I can yeah uh, just get rid of them basically. Although parting with this tank is kind of going to hurt because I really enjoyed playing the SU-100M1 tier 7 Soviet tank destroyer. Now this is actually the tier 7 TD from the lower line. So as you probably know there are two lines of Soviet TDs, one leading up to the object 268, the other leading to the object 263. And in my opinion the object 263 is the better tank, especially after the TD nerf that did not affect the lower tank but it did affect the 268. However many people still like to go for the upper line just because you get the ISU-152 which is supposed to be amazing. I haven't played it yet. But I personally just decided to go for the lower line. Now really the lower line is really really interesting because they're not like typical TDs and when these tanks were first introduced in the game they really revolutionized a kind of TD gameplay in a way because something like this had never been seen before. Because really all these tanks here play more like medium tanks without a turret really if that makes sense so it is kind of quite difficult to get used to them but i really enjoyed playing the su 100 m1 and i think i'm going to love the other tanks in this line too yeah so let's have a quick look at this tank's research tree it's actually quite small this is one of the easiest grinds in the game really because to start off your start gun is not much different from your top gun really if we just quickly compare the two guns we can see that really they've got the same damage and penetration and the only differences are rate of fire, uh, accuracy and aiming time and although these are a lot better on the upgraded gun they're still acceptable on the stock gun so really uh, unlocking the gun on this TD is not that high a priority which is kind of weird for a tank destroyer so if you're researching this tech tree here this radio and the tier 6 engine carry over from the SU-100. You can mount the engine straight away but do not mount the radio because that will prevent you from mounting the upgraded gun later on because of the weight limit. So just upgrade to the engine. After that research either the tier 8 engine or the upgraded gun research both of them, mount them both, it doesn't matter in which order. I would really go for the gun because, yeah, it's a TD, you know. After that, you mount the suspension and then you get the radio. So, really, it is a very, very effortless grind and I've got some gameplay for you lined up later in which I showcase this tank with a stock gun pulling off an ace tanker, I think. So, it is really possible to perform well. Really, this tank is kind of similar to a Jagdpanther the tier 7 German TD with the 88mm gun but it's kind of it's kind of similar but then again it isn't so let's just have a look at its stats it's got 830 hit points which is not a lot because obviously it's a TD but you know at tier 7 that will usually mean that you can take about 4 hits 3 to 4 hits which is alright in a tier 7 game I mean obviously if you get thrown into a tier 8 or 9 matchup that's not looking too great anymore but at tier 7 unless you kind of suicide right at the beginning you should be able to take quite a few hits you weigh 32 tons in this vehicle that is actually surprisingly heavy because many people underestimate the weight of this vehicle I mean obviously you cannot compete with like heavy tanks or German tank destroyers say but still you know uh, because of the way you play this tank maybe you'll even encounter say enemy light or medium tanks in a kind of a almost brawling situation if that makes sense and uh, you can sometimes actually go for the ram but it usually is quite close so you have to really know the weight of your opponents and your own weight it's got a 600 horsepower engine that is really really good that means that this tank gets an amazing power to weight ratio it's got a speed limit of 50 kph turns at 34 degrees per second and it's got gun traverse of 44 degrees per second now that means that this tank is just really maneuverable this must be one of the quickest and most agile tank destroyers in the game and that kind of means that the way you play this tank it's not really like a conventional tank destroyer you don't really play it well 
really there are two ways to play this tank. First of all, you can play it like a Yak Pant with an 88mm gun, staying behind in the bushes and using it as a designated sniper, really. But in my opinion, that's kind of a bit of a waste of this tank's potential. Although, I use it that way sometimes too. But really, what you can do in this tank, I mean, it sounds weird for a tank destroyer, but you can actually wolf pack with medium tanks and really push and make a difference, secure key positions in the map, hold them till your heavy tanks advance, and yeah, basically just try to actually outflank your enemies because of your great speed. And if we look at the gun stats a bit later, you will see also see that because of its bad penetration, outflanking is quite necessary actually. So the armor is um is actually not too disappointing of this vehicle, but we'll have a close look at the armor profile in Tank Inspector. So here's the collision model of the SU-100M1, and we can straight away see that actually the armor is not as bad as might be expected of a kind of a fast-moving tank destroyer. It's got 90 millimeters at the front, which is angled very well. If we look at the undamaged model, this is the way it looks. It is actually at a very, very good angle, and the lower plate is angled really well too. So really, I would never recommend going for the lower plate because really, its effective fitness is a lot higher than on the upper plate. So also another risk when you go for the lower glaciers is that you've got this strip of 130 millimeters here. So it's quite likely that you'll hit that and bounce right off because it's got really good armor. So really, uh, if you think that you could just penetrate this tank from anywhere, you are quite mistaken because if the SU-100M1 angles like this about, well, its armor amounts up to 135 millimeters about and that means that for example if you're driving an american medium tank like the jumbo or something like that a lot of tier 6 and 5 vehicles will have real difficulties penetrating this vehicle frontally and even some tier 7 tanks you will be able to bounce some shots of course against tier 8 and 9 vehicles your chances are quite slim but um, Still, this kind of means that at least you've got some chance of surviving. If you angle a tank like this, you should be quite safe. I mean, of course, you've got these cheeks here, which then are kind of exposed, but, I mean, the risk is not that big, really. And then, I mean, these the side armor here is at such a good angle that nothing will penetrate it, usually. The fighting compartment, however, is angled not quite as well. So, if you manage to hit it right next to the gun mantlet, actually, there's less effective thickness to penetrate than on the yeah the, the frontal hull basically so if you're having difficulties penetrating the hull of an su try to go for the fighting compartment for the fighting compartment's armor next to the gun mantlet but make sure that you avoid hitting the gun mantlet because the armor of the gun mantlet actually is quite sturdy in many places obviously side armor is not too good but for a tank destroyer it's actually above average especially here with the angling you can sometimes especially if you kind of you can actually over angle it maybe even like this and that will still make it really difficult for enemies to penetrate this armor zone here and then obviously rear is no problems penetrating there and of course 50 millimeters at the top is no problem for RT either so um yeah really what we can see here is that although this tank is really quick and mobile it's actually not badly protected i'm not saying that you will be bouncing shots like crazy but it can and will happen and not all too seldomly as well especially against lower tier tanks and because this tank is so fast and actually it's not seen on the battlefields that often it gets underestimated by lots of people and they just think oh well i'll be able to penetrate this easily but they actually won't be so just use that to your advantage angle and so on but you know don't get overconfident this is not a heavy tank you're not supposed to take shots really so um yeah let's go back to the garage to have a look at the gun and the rest of the stats so um yeah that leads us on to the gun and i want to compare this gun to the yak panthers 88 millimeter because they are in a way they are kind of quite similar Actually, um, if you watch my Yak Panther review, you'll know that many people actually prefer to use the 8.8cm .8 rather than the 105 on the Yak Panther because it is a lot cheaper to run. And that's why, uh, really, if you're one of these people who like using the 8.8cm on the Yak Panther, probably you will like the SU-100 as well. The rate of fire is a bit worse than the Soviet gun, but it is still really, really good for a tier 7 TD. The penetration is quite a lot worse, really because the German tank gets 203 millimeters, the Soviet only gets 175. That is quite poor 
for a tier 7 TD. So really you will have to use outflanking maneuvers, try to get the sides and rear of your enemies. That's why I recommend sometimes wolf packing with mediums, even if it sounds kind of strange for a tank destroyer. Just because you cannot really often, especially in tier 8 and 9 games, you won't be able to penetrate your enemies frontally. But in tier 7 and lower matches, usually also because you're quite accurate, you will be able to hit weak spots and kind of negate that disadvantage. Interestingly, however, the gold ammo penetration is almost exactly the same on both guns, and the HE ammo penetration is actually higher on the 100mm. So, use that to your advantage, in, especially in tier 5 games, there are quite a few tanks running around that have got very, very weak ammo that can be easily penetrated with 50mm of pen. And, you know, if you're going up against those tier eight and nine tanks just always keep a few APCR rounds spare uh, you never know when they'll come in handy the accuracy is 0.33 that is really really good at tier 7 for TD it is however marginally less than the, on the German 8.8 .8, but really you won't notice the difference in game it is very very accurate and here comes the main advantage in my opinion of the 100 millimeter over the 8.8 centimeter and that is the 1.7 second aiming time that is just amazing aiming time compared to the 2.3 seconds on the 8.8 .8, i mean 2.3 is not bad but it kind of that's that was the main thing that kind of put me off the 8.8 .8 a bit to be honest and why i used the 10.5 on the yak panther so yeah, really that is a big advantage because aiming time is quite important on TDs because if you have to move your hole to catch up with a moving target then you have to aim again and the faster you can aim the faster you can get your shot off and maybe that will give you a kill. So um, yeah, that's why in my opinion, I mean all in all I would probably rather have the 8.8 centimeter, but the 100 millimeter is quite nice and it really feels a look it feels very similar to when you're using the 8.8 centimeter on the Yak Panther. So we haven't got all that many stats left. View range 360 is kind of underwhelming at tier 7. Most tier 7 tanks get 370 meters view range on average. So yeah, that's kind of disappointing, but we don't expect amazing view range on the Russian tanks. Also, you've got 525 meter signal range, but that again is kind of a bit underwhelming. And that also means that because your signal range, first of all, and also your view range is not that great, you, you staying back behind bushes is maybe not the most effective tactic in this vehicle, and you might want to push and be more aggressive. For equipment, I mounted a camo net because it was really cheap. That is quite a viable option really because you just get these games in which you just want to stay back and snipe and camo net really helps. The camo values of SE100M1 are quite good anyway but camo net will just improve those. Also you should go with vents and the tank gun rammer. You don't really need a GLD just because your aiming time is 1.7 seconds anyway so it's amazing. You don't need it. So just go with tank gun rammer and vents you can't go wrong with that. Then for crew skills, you can see I went with brothers in arms on the entire crew and then repairs. Repairs is really, really important on this tank because you use it in a very aggressive role. So having repairs is just essential. So what I did is I went for repairs on the entire crew, then got brothers in arms, so I swapped it for brothers in arms, then got repairs again. I'm going to swap this for six cents for the moment that reaches 100%. Then, well, you obviously want to have clutch braking on your driver because it's a TD and turning faster will just help you be better, uh, be a better knife fighter basically. Then on your gunner, well, uh, gunner skills aren't really that important I feel on this vehicle. You could get Deadeye or maybe Armorer but you don't really need any of those too much. Just get Deadeye, you can't go wrong with that. And then for your loader, yeah, basically just run with safe storage as usual. And by the way, your commander is also your radio operator, so run situational awareness on him to kind of negate your view range disadvantage. Yeah, so uh, that was kind of more or less it to the garage review of this tank. And let's head out to the battlefield to see how this tank performs and so that you guys kind of understand what I mean with using a TD as kind of more or less as a medium tank. So yeah, let's head in. So, this is our very first game on Runeburg and Fire. You can see I'm platooned up with my two mates, General Denny and Redbird Forest, once again. You could say this is kind of a uh, failed platoon because they've got 
tier 6 vehicles and them in a tier 7 tank, but it all worked out, it's a tier 8 game, so we should be able to work this. Now, uh, you may notice that I'm not using the upgraded gun, this is the stock gun, and they've also got the second best motor only, so not the best motor, and the stock suspension. Still, you can see that I'm able to move quite quickly, and as I already pointed out in the garage, the stock gun is actually quite similar to the top gun, and it's... Uh, well, it's kind of, it's it's still very competitive at the tier, so you, it, it yeah, so you can still use it very effectively. So there's an enemy IS3 being quite aggressive. So my mate General Denny, who's using the 122 mm gun on the SC100, uh, put a great shot into that guy, and we're putting the hurt down against that Cheeto. Hey, here's the IS3 again. Ah, oh, didn't completely aim that one. And that's just with these soft stats, you know, that's just kind of where where you want to have the upgraded gun. The attributes are so much better on it. But the raw alpha damage and penetration is exactly the same. And for me, the main issue with the SC-100 one is actually the penetration, which is kind of not all that great. 175, I mean, at tier 7, it's alright, but you really expect more from a tank destroyer. Also, the gun depression is not all that great on this tank, as you may expect. And the traverse arc is not amazing either. But, you know, uh, those are, like, really the only three drawbacks of this tank, except for, I mean, the alpha damage is kind of quite low as well. But the DPM is amazing. Speed's good. Armor is decent for a tier 7 tank destroyer. So it looks like that FCM's AFK. So I'm not going to say no to that free experience there. Let's see if we can pick up the kill. And yeah, we got him. <laughs> Bit of cheeky experience there, but you know, why not? So, Panzer 38 NA, I really don't get why that tank gets thrown into tier 8 matches, but they're changing that in patch 9.1, but you know, seriously, it's just so, it, it is slow, first of all, for a scout, it, it's got worse view range than any tier 7 or 8 tank, it's got horrible armor, a horrible gun, and just everything's horrible about the tank in the tier 8 game, no way it can in any way achieve anything in this kind of matchup, so I'm really glad we're going to fix that. And, oh, okay, there's a Sherman Jumbo. Turn, turn, turn. Looks like he's AFK as well. Okay, that's great. Kill number two. Okay, and this kind of just shows you how aggressive you can be in your SC100M1. You can see my two mates and me are really leading the push here. And basically we're doing exactly the medium tank thing. Coming around, flanking our enemies, attacking them from the rear. So, hi Mr. Prototype. Yeah, that's cool. And now my friend's kind of gun blocking me a bit. So he misses a shot. Put one in. Get hit. That's a NAS horn firing at me. And, oh my gosh, okay, I've got six health remaining. That's not cool. But I... I don't know, he's not, he's stopped firing at me, I think I've gone camouflaged again. So, you see, I'm not firing there because I know that if I fire I'm going to be spotted again. But I get shot at anyway, so I decided it's time to retreat. Not sure why I'm not repairing my engine here. That's, by the way, something that I forgot to point, it, point out is that the engine is very, very weak on this vehicle. I mean, in terms of durability. It gets taken out quite often because it's front mounted. That's not that cool. Let's see if we could pull off any bounces for this game. Yeah, we got. it looks like we got one off upper glaciers, except for that, not that much bouncing going on here, though. I mean, obviously, if you're facing guns like the Nashorns or, uh, you know, T28 prototypes, stuff like that, IS-3, then it's quite, uh, you know, it's to be expected that you're not going to bounce. Okay, it's a bit boring here. And there's the NAS one, finally. Let's see if we can take him out. That would really help. Oh, no eyes on target. Come on. Oh, yeah. Can't get the outline, though. He's behind those buildings. That's the problem. 
Or is he? Yes, he is. Okay, so... I, I, at this point, I just said to my mate, okay, dude, let, let's just close the distance. Look, this guy's... If we've got this guy engaging, this guy at range, he will just hold gunners every time. So we just have to get in there. Now, for a second, I wasn't really paying attention to the map there. That was quite stupid. I thought the Cave 1S was coming around this corner close to me. Although he actually was uh, there behind the row of houses there. So, oh yeah, Panther gets taken out. Now I decide, no, I, I don't really want to engage these guys now. I, I'm, I'm on 6 health. And my friend in the last one gets dealt down quite strongly, but therefore he gets a kill on the enemy last one. And Redwood Forest picks up a frag on the KV1S. So things are looking quite good now. Scores 13 to 8. We've only got the Tiger 2 and the enemy French artillery left to kill. And yeah, that's cool. Looks like that Tiger 2's just given up there. I'm going for the tracking shot. Because, you know, even if I don't do any damage then, I'll still get some bonus experience. And get the kill with an above average damage roll. Very nice. And then, my other friend gets another kill in the Nars Horn. So yeah, that just shows you that, first of all, you can perform well with tier 6 tanks, even a tier 8 game. And secondly, that uh, even stock for SU-100M1 is quite a threat, even to higher tier vehicles. And this just this just really shows that the way you can use this tank as a flanking vehicle, trying to engage your enemies from the rear. And in the kind of situations we got into in this in this game, usually our penetration didn't really count that much. So um, we were able to negate that disadvantage and just really put the hurt down on our enemies. And really, in a way, our platoon carried our team through this game so let's have a look for post game stats so we got 43,830 credits and 3,696 experience for that game we came first in experience earned slightly more experience than that t28 prototype 1232 quite nice result there 2345 damage and two frags so that was enough to get us our ace tanker badge with the stock gun so i was really happy to pick that up and i think this was my third game or something so that was really nice in the detailed report 17 shots fired 13 hit 12 pence that's actually quite a nice ratio i mean the hit hit ratio is not that great but penetrations is quite nice 2345 damage as already mentioned four hits received of which three penned one didn't quite impressive result actually for a tier 8 game so yeah that one uh one bounce kept us in the game and we received 1050 potential damage in total spotted one enemy damaged six destroyed two and also picked up almost 2000 well, okay, kind of exaggerating a bit there, <laughs> 1,863 uh, assistance damage. So that was just what I was saying about tracking enemies and so on. It just helps. And travel 1.63 kilometers. Also, you will notice that the ammo resupply costs are really low on this vehicle. So if you're looking for a good tank for credit farming, why not check out the SE100M1? Although probably you would be better off using a tier 5 tank if you don't want to invest in a premium vehicle. But still, you know, it's not going to set you back all that much running this machine. So I've still got one last replay lined up for you guys and then we'll have a summary. So this is our second game for today on Siegfried Line. And I'm just going to speed it up till we get to position. So uh, this is a tier 7 match again, but it is a very, very tier 7 match. So really nearly the entire teams on both sides are made up of tier 7 tanks. But that's nice because that means that there's plenty of damage and experience to go around. So you can see me heading out to the northeastern part of this map on the 9 and 0 line. Because I'll try to uh, kind of intercept enemy scouts and TDs and medium tanks trying to flank round along this route. So probably in this game you'll see more of a passive sniping kind of gameplay. Straight away we encountered ELC AMX that I tried to hit but missed. So I'm advancing game quite aggressively. Thinking about going in for the round but then just decided to take him out with my standard gun. Talking about guns, this is actually now the upgraded gun, the 100mm, I mean, okay, the other one also is the 100mm, but uh, this is the improved one with better accuracy, aiming time, and rate of fire. So no eyes on that M6 there, 
let's see if we can maybe hit that panther. So yeah, I was saying I was probably be I would probably be more passive in this game, but actually you see me being very very aggressive here, taking a hit from a tiger one. Luckily that guy was stuck and only went to my tracks, which absorbed that hit. So um, yeah, that was quite lucky there. Quite a risk that I took, but I got away with it. And now I'm in a really, really good position here to stop these enemies here advancing towards my allies. And this is just what you can do in your SC100M1, which you couldn't do in many other TDs. Just being so aggressive, holding choke points, being... Yeah, basically being the medium tank. This is this is usually where I like to go in tanks like my A44 or uh, save STA1, just standard medium vehicles. But I'm occupying this this position now in my tank store and doing quite well. You can see that I've got that IS perma track, which is very very good. But I'm kind of afraid that he's going to get away now because although my D is very very medium tank like. The main problem that I have with holding this corner is that I haven't got a turret. So I can't kind of poke round the corner like I could in a medium or heavy tank. And because my gun arc is quite narrow, it means that I can't can't really side scrape or anything either. So that's kind of making things a bit difficult. But you can see that we kind of beat back the enemy assault on this corner. And now I'm going in for the counter attack it seems. Although, no, I'm, I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go along here. No, I, uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go for that Tiger 1, it seems. haven't watched this replay in ages. So, yeah, the other Tiger 1 is with his Astios. This is just really where you want to be in your SC100 M1. Having rear shots at high tier enemy tanks. See Tiger 1 stock. Would like to go for M6 there, but my gun arc didn't allow me to. I wasn't flexible enough in that moment. Luckily, the M6 was taken out, and I get the kill on the Tiger one. So very nice there. Scores 94. Things are looking quite secure. Kind of getting a bit afraid though of that T29 pushing up behind, but it looks like he's not interested in me. So I decide to go for another detour to be able to take out that guy behind me here, this IS. So, this is just really where you want to be in your S101. 100M1, sorry. Behind enemies, and oh, that was close, that was so close. Oh, <laughs> lots of stock Tiger 1s running around right there. And RT gets some oh boy, and quite a survivor here. But right there, that was just my armor sticking up for me. Okay, fair enough, that was the VK's gun with 136mm of pen only, I think. But still, you know, uh, that shot could have easily killed me. And if I had been driving another tank, like for example a, a German vehicle, or maybe the French, although the French has got quite good armor. But, you know, in many TDs, that would have killed me. But it didn't, because I've got quite decent armor and probably what that tag was thinking is oh it's it's one of the lower russian td line tanks they uh, they don't have good armor i they don't have to aim for weak spots and then he just uh, yeah basically got a bounce and it's talking of weak spots that's it that's interesting too because these this tank it actually has not got any weak spots you think that if you look at it frontally where would you shoot this tank there's a weak spot we've already looked at the what tank inspector and uh, we learned that the lower glaciers actually got thicker effective armor than the upper glaciers. And okay, I guess the weakest point for armor is just beside the gun mantlet on the fighting compartment. But I mean, even that has got quite a sturdy bit of steel protected. So let's see if we can pick up a frag on this tiger one before we go down. Oh, well, not going to go down before the game ends. I mean. Oh, too clutch, okay. Uh, come on, reload, reload, reload. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, you know, never mind. Four kills, I'm not going to complain. Nice round, and I hope that just showed once more how you can play the SC100M1 in a very, very aggressive gameplay style. This was just this game was just like really typically how I would play a medium tank, and it was also how I would play the SC100M1, because it basically is like a medium tank without a turret. And that is cool because I like my medium tanks and I like this tank as well because of that. So let's go back to the um, yeah. So let's quickly have a look at the results of this game and then we'll have a conclusion. 
Okay, so we managed to pick up 117,044 credits. That must have been some kind of special once again. Seems like nearly all games I show you have got some kind of specials going on with the credit being multiplied. Anyway, we got our first class mastery badge in that game. Not quite as good as the, la not quite as good as the last one, but still good enough. 5,292 experience with a times free for the first victory of the day and a premium account. Team score shows that we got 1,103 experience, was the most of the team again. Most damage on the team as well it seems, uh, closely followed by this Jack Panther and also the most frags along with this Panzer Kampfwagen 6 Tiger. Detailed report, 15 shots fired, 11 hit, 11 penned. So you can see that um, because we managed to outflank our enemies, get onto their rear, uh, we could really really basically override our drawback with a penetration and make every single shot that we hit penetrate. We dealt 2164 damage which is not amazing but it is alright. Received 8 hits of which all 8 penetrated but quite a few were absorbed by our tracks and we also picked up 1910 potential damage and uh, damaged 6 enemies, destroyed 4, and got 870 assistance damage in that round. Again, our ammo cost quite low, 3,780 for the entire resupply, and of course, because I was a special, we got loads of credits. So yeah, that was kind of it for the SC100M1. I really hope you enjoyed this review and you kind of learnt something or can now understand how this tank works. It really is not like a conventional tank destroy, but more like a, it's kind of off. Uh, quite often it's compared to a T-44 without a turret. Yeah, that, that really sounds kind of right. It really feels like a medium tank. And I really like that. It's kind of it's kind of quite refreshing from just playing sniping TDs all the time. So I can really recommend this tank. If you're into medium tanks, you will like the S100M1. But if you like high alpha damage vehicles like the ISC-152, uh, tanks like that, the German tier 8 tank destroyers, if you're into those kind of machines, then you might be quite disappointed by the SU-100M1's performance. So it really depends on your kind of playstyle. For me, this tank was quite cool. I really enjoyed playing it. I'm looking forward even more to the next tank on the line, the SU-101. Probably some cool clips of that coming up soon as well. And probably in a few days I'll be having a WZ-132 review for you guys. After that there's going to be a, a kind of, I'm going to have a break with reviews and do some gameplays and so on probably because I have been spamming reviews. So story for that, I hope you enjoyed and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it or even sub to my channel. And I hope I see you next time or maybe even on the battlefield. Bye bye.